Look at verse number six. Here's another commandment. This is what I find to be the fifth commandment given in the Mosaic law. It says, whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. Now, this is different than the commandment not to murder. This is different than the commandment that says thou shalt not kill, and here's why. This is not a commandment not to kill. This is a commandment to execute the one who does kill, to execute the murderer. Everybody see that? It says, whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. This is where God is commanding the authorities to kill those who murder, to execute the murderer today. That's a commandment that has been given here in uh, Genesis 9, verse 6. Now, I do not believe that this has been disannulled in the New Testament. Amen. I don't believe there's anything that teaches that. Amen. I think that uh, a lot of people will, of course, try to bring up the story of uh, John chapter 8 with the woman caught in adultery, where Jesus says, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And they'll take that to say, see, Jesus just abolished the death penalty across the board. That's not what he was doing in that story whatsoever. If you get the context of the story, they came to Jesus and the Bible says their goal was to tempt him. Okay. Now, can you think of another time when they wanted to tempt him? Where they brought him the money and said, hey, are you going to pay taxes? Should we give tribute to Caesar? They're trying to get him in trouble with the law by getting him to say, hey, don't give tribute to Caesar. Then they're going to go accuse him to Caesar. They're going to go accuse him of the Romans. Well, if you read the book of John, a little bit later on in the book of John, it's very clear when the Bible says that it was not lawful for the Jews to put anyone to death. Because remember, the Jews wanted to kill Jesus. They couldn't put anyone to death legally. So they had to go to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, and say, we have a law, and by our law, he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. And they said, and, and basically Pontius Pilate said, well, take he him and judge him according to your law. Just go ahead and do it yourself. And they said, no, we can't because we're not allowed to put anyone to death. It's not lawful for us to put anyone to death. So think about this now. The children of Israel, this has nothing to do with Old Testament or New Testament. The children of Israel were under the laws of Rome. So they had to follow those laws. They didn't have the power to, to put people to death whenever they wanted. They had to follow the laws of the land. And so coming to Jesus saying, well, Moses said that this woman should be put to death. What do you say? If he says, let's put her to death, they're going to accuse him of the Romans. And if he says, let's not put her to death, they're going to say, he's contradicting Moses. He thinks he knows what. So they're trying to get him in a catch-22. That's what the Pharisees are constantly trying to do. So he outsmarts them by saying, okay. He doesn't say, don't do it. He just says, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her just to basically put the ball in their court, just to shut them up. Kind of like he did with the coin, where he says, well, you know, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, render unto God that which is God. Jesus just always had a smarter answer than their games that they were trying to play and, and the tricks that they were trying to play to get him in trouble. And then when all the accusers were gone away, Jesus says, you know, is there no one here to condemn you? Well, neither do I condemn thee. Go thy way and sin no more. Why? Another great thing about that story just shows Jesus' power to forgive sins. You know, it's another great lesson there. But that doesn't mean that we should just have total anarchy where basically just no one is punished. Because you know what? People who don't believe in the death penalty, they don't say just don't punish. Find me someone who's against the death penalty that just says, just don't punish. Just let them go free. You know what they'll say? What will they say? Lock them in a cage. Where's that in the Bible? You know what I mean? But so, so the thing is, the, if you look at God's law, and if we were to go through and read right now Genesis through Deuteronomy, all of God's law, there's no prison. There's no cage. Because prison is not a biblical concept. So this idea of, oh, well, in the New Testament is prison. What in the world? Show me that in the New Testament. Show me prison. There's no prison. So if you think that we should abolish the death penalty, basically what you're saying is just, no, you know, let's just descend into anarchy, I guess. It doesn't even make sense. Because how do you punish the murderer? If you don't give him any punish, we're going to go into anarchy and violence. That's what we saw happen before the flood, where the whole earth was filled with violence because there was no death penalty. That's why the death penalty is even being instituted in Genesis 9, to avoid that happening again. 
And obviously God doesn't want us in the New Testament to live in a place where people are just being killed and slaughtered and there's no consequences. This whole idea of putting people in prison is very inhumane. It destroys people's lives. It, it, it's not a, a righteous, especially when they put people in solitary confinement. It makes them go insane. It's not a humane punishment. The punishments of the Bible are, are better and make more sense. And so we see here the punishment to put to death those who shed man's blood. One who would kill a man should be killed, according to the Bible. Uh, and again, that's not something for us to take into our hands because we're not living under the Romans, but we're living under the United States, which is similar to the Romans. And so basically, we have to follow the laws of our land. It's not our job to take things into our own hand and decide, well, hey, this person killed, we're going to make sure they die. No, that we're supposed to leave that to the powers that be. But biblically speaking, if our government were doing its job, they would put to death those who commit first degree murder. Because later this is clarified in the book of Exodus as being a premeditated murder, not just a crime of passion, second degree type murder.